Hi, this is Rebecca with lectinfree.me. Today we're going to talk about what foods contain lectins and kind of what Dr. Gundry allows and doesn't allow you to eat on the plant paradox plan, which I think is where a lot of this lectin-free eating is coming from. I know that's where I first heard about eating lectin-free. So lectins are contained in the skins and the seeds of some of, of pretty much all plants. Lectins are pretty much in everything, but some of them are more inflammatory than others. And the ones that Dr. Gundry wants you to cut out are the ones that cause the most problems. So what are the foods that contain lectins that cause inflammation in your body? The first is beans. These are your dried beans. These are your fresh beans. Um, because beans, beans are a seed. So these are going to be your peas and your pinto beans and your kidney beans and chickpeas and even green beans. All of those contain lectins which can cause inflammation in your body. Soybeans are probably the biggest culprit. Soy is in everything. And I know this because I was, I had issues with soy before I ever heard of eating lectin free and had cut it out of my diet. And you wouldn't believe what soy's in. It's in most chocolate, it's in tuna fish, it's in just, I even picked up a can of beans the other day. It was beans and they had soy in it. I have no idea why there are soy in canned beans, but there was. And the second group of foods are nightshades, which, you know, you heard, heard of the deadly nightshade plant. These are kind of a little poisonous to us. So these are your tomatoes, your eggplant, your peppers, and your, um, what do you call that? Potatoes. And your potatoes. The skins of these plants are what causes the issue. And the seeds inside. So that's why the Italians would always, like, park hook your tomatoes. And they peel them and they de-seed them. And there's still Italians, I know of, in South Louisiana doing that to this day because that was their tradition how they brought up um, they were brought up to eat the tomatoes to make it um, more easily digestible for the system in addition to having issues with soy i also had issues with pepper so these were things that i already knew i had some issue with i didn't realize how big of an issue that i had with them and the third group is squash a squash is actually a fruit and it's got a couple issues. It's got lectins in its skins and seeds, which you know you can again peel and de-seed. But the other problem is it's really high in sugar. Especially if you do like I did and like it's eat a whole bunch of it, right? So I'm sorry, squash. It's not on the menu. And that's gonna be your zucchini your spaghetti squash, your pumpkin, your cucumbers, all those really good things that, you know, that were brought up as health foods. Now, once you can kind of clear your system of the lectins, then you could possibly add some of these things back into your diet. But really pay attention and see what is bothering you now before you cut them out of your diet. And your biggest culprit and the thing that contains the most lectins are your grains because they're not only in the seeds they're like in the stalks and the holes and they're all over the, the grains are the worst things that you can eat this is your wheat and everything that is like faux wheat um, so your farro and your buckwheat and your all that stuff your rice um, I guess if you have to eat a starch that has lectins in it then rice is going to be your best bet but try and cut that out too but corn corns and everything just like soyas corns a big culprit causes inflammation in your system and I had actually stopped eating corn before I ever went lectin free um, and my husband can't eat corn my mom can't eat corn corn corns and everything too so you got to really watch that not only the corn syrup but just like corn byproducts are just like added into stuff. So reading labels is a good thing. 
But there are two safe grains that you can eat, and that would be sorghum and millet. And these grains are actually eaten in a lot of other countries on a daily basis without any issues and any um, special preparations. So give those a try if you want to eat some grain. Sorghum's a good sorghum's a good substitute for rice. Just make sure you keep, cook it with enough water, and it takes a whole lot more water than rice does. And millet is a good substitute for corn. It, you can kind of make like like polenta or pilaf. It's a it's a little bitty grain um, that kind of smushes and yeah. Ooh, you know what? I'm gonna have to make like some sort of well, I don't know. I'm gonna have to see how to make like a tamale casserole, like a pizza casserole, not pizza casserole. I'm gonna have to see if there's a way to make like a taco casserole without peppers and tomatoes, but with a millet crust. I'm gonna have to call it something else, right? But that might be pretty good. So that's my two cents on what not to eat when you're eating lectin-free. We wanna stay away from the things that cause inflammation and we wanna stay away from the things that have too much sugar in them. So hopefully this has helped you. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more, hit that subscribe button and that little bell so you get notices. And as always, I appreciate you watching my videos. Good luck on your lectin-free journey.